Hi, Dr. Crowder here. I'm making this video to give a demonstration of how you can apply the Hardy-Weinberg equation to calculate allele and genotype frequencies. So first, why would we be interested in calculating allele or genotype frequencies? Uh, the reason that the Hardy-Weinberg equation is taught so often in genetics courses is because it's really important for the study of evolution and population genetics in that the study of evolution and population genetics is understanding changes in allele and genotype frequencies over time. And so therefore we use the Hardy-Weinberg to calculate these frequencies and be able to compare them across populations or across generational times to understand whether evolution is occurring. And we can define evolution as a change in inheritable biological characteristics in populations over time. So alleles and genotype frequencies inform these biological characteristics. And population genetics is studying uh, alleles of all the genes and all the genotypes in a population over time or in between populations. And so again, we use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to quantify allele and genotype frequencies where if we're thinking about evolution, there are different mechanisms that drive evolution. And if mechanisms drive changes in allele and genotype frequencies from one generation to the next generation in any population, then you would say that that population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Allele frequencies and genotype frequencies are changing. And if allele and genotype frequencies are changing, then that population is undergoing evolution. And if we're just looking from one generation to the next or over several generations, this would be looking at microevolution. So changes in allele and genotype frequencies over a smaller time scale or a shorter time scale. Now the terms microevolution and macroevolution uh, are both the same processes uh, where they are both changes in allele and genotype frequencies over time, but these are just changes that are occurring over different time scales. So microevolution are changes and shifts in allele frequencies in a population over relatively short periods of time. Uh, so from one generation to the next or over several generations, and they represent small steps of uh, genetic change. These small steps then add up to macroevolution, which are larger changes um, that happen over longer periods of time, such as the formation of new groups or new species that, again, occur through changing uh, biological characteristics of a given population over time. So why don't we now look at how we can use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to measure these allele and genotype frequencies? To do this, we are going to consider the gene alpha. This gene alpha has a dominant allele, capital A, and a recessive allele, lowercase a. And according to Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and Hardy-Weinberg equation, we assign this dominant allele as the letter P, and we assign the recessive allele to be represented as the letter Q. So P represents actually the frequency of the dominant allele and Q represents the frequency of the recessive allele as written here. And again, this is the frequency of both alleles within a given population. So in that case then, if you were to add up the frequency of big A and the frequency of little a, they should equal one if these were the only two alleles of gene alpha in the population, adding them up together would represent all the alleles of gene alpha, which should equal one. So let's look at now how you would calculate that frequency. To calculate the frequency of the dominant allele, big A or P, you would wanna add up the total number of all A alleles in that population, so every single allele of A. And then you would want to divide that 
by the total number of all alleles of gene alpha in that population. So then to add up these alleles, we need to identify the different genotypes that we would find these alleles in. So we have different genotypes. You can be homozygous dominant, big A, big A, heterozygous, big A, little a, or homozygous recessive, little a, little a. As we can see, the big A allele is found in this genotype and in this genotype. In the homozygous dominant genotype, we have two copies of the big A. So there are two alleles of the big A in the homozygous dominant genotype. Conversely, in the heterozygous genotype, we only have one allele of big A. So if we were to add up all of the alleles of big A, we would include the homozygous dominant genotype, but we would multiply it by two because there are two alleles of big A in that genotype. So we would take all of the individuals that are homozygous dominant and multiply it by two because each individual represents two big A alleles. Then we would include all of the individuals that are heterozygous in the population, but we don't need to multiply it by anything because every individual that's heterozygous only has one big A allele. We would divide that bent then by the total number of alleles of gene alpha in the population. And so we have three genotypes. Each genotype is made up of two alleles. So we would need to num multiply the number of individuals of each genotype by two to get the total number of all alleles of the gene in the population. Or otherwise, you could take the total number of individuals for a population, for a human population, let's say, and multiply it by two because any individual has two alleles of the given gene. So this calculation would give us the frequency of the big A allele because we are adding up all of the big A alleles divided by the total number of alleles of the gene in the population. And so this is how you can calculate an allele frequency. If you have an allele frequency, so if you have the value of P or you have the value of Q, you can also apply the Hardy-Weinberg equation as written here. So the Hardy-Weinberg equation is adding up all of the different genotypes in the population, and together these different genotypes should equal one. And this is used to calculate and predict genotype frequency from allele frequencies or vice versa. If you, if you have information about a genotype frequency, you can then uh, work backwards and deduce information about an allele frequency, and I'll go through an example of that. So we've got P squared, where P represents the dominant allele. So this would represent the big A, big A genotype. 2PQ represents the heterozygous genotype, big A, little a. And Q squared represents the homozygous recessive phenotype, little a, little a. So P squared represents big A, big A. The heterozygous genotype is represented by 2PQ, and the homozygous recessive genotype is represented by Q squared. So if we were to go back to our color coding where our dominant allele was blue and our recessive allele was orange, I've now just rewritten this equation here, uh, color coding it to try and uh, also show you how each of these terms represent the different alleles and the different genotypes. So why don't we now go through an example of applying Hardy-Weinberg equation. For this example, we are going to use uh, the human autosomal recessive condition cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a recessive condition, meaning that you need to have two mutant copies of the gene, specifically the CFTR gene, to have cystic fibrosis. If you are homozygous dominant, or, or homozygous for the dominant wild type alleles, or heterozygous, or carrier of the cystic fibrosis, 
mutant allele, you would have a normal phenotype. So if we wanted to represent the recessive allele, we could say little c. And so the frequency of little c would be equal to q. If we want to represent the dominant allele as big C, this would equal P. And I'm giving you the statistic here that the incidence of cystic fibrosis, the phenotype cystic fibrosis, is in one in every 2,000 individuals. So again, if cystic fibrosis is a recessive condition, that means that one in every 2,000 individuals is little c, little c, which in the Hardy-Weinberg equation represents Q squared. And so one in every 2,000 is 0 0.0005. So we would say then that Q squared equals 0 0.0005 because again, Q squared is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype. So, so far here, I haven't even asked a question. All I've simply done is converted the information given in this sentence, giving us the statistics of the incident of cystic fibrosis in terms of Hardy-Weinberg. What this statistic means when you're thinking of the Hardy-Weinberg equation, and it's the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype, again, which is Q squared. So now, what if we were to ask, what is the predicted frequency of cystic fibrosis carriers in the population. So when we say cystic fibrosis carriers in the population, we are asking what is the frequency of individuals that are heterozygous for the wild type dominant allele, but carriers heterozygous for, for the mutant allele that causes cystic fibrosis. So again, here's the question and the information we're given. We're given the information of uh, the incidence of cystic fibrosis. And I've already gone through that Q squared is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype. So then we can say that 0 0.0005 equals Q squared. And we can use this then to calculate and infer what the frequency is of the recessive allele, because this would equal to the square root of Q squared, right? So the square root of Q squared equals Q, which is the frequency of the recessive allele. So if we were to do this calculation, the square, square root of Q squared is the square root of 0 0.0005, because we know that's what Q squared equals, which if you do the math, the square root of 0 0.0005 is equal to 0 0.022, which equals Q. So then we would say that the frequency of the recessive allele equals 0 0.022. That is the frequency of that allele out of all of the total alleles of this CFTR gene in the population. Then I'll remind you of the equation that P plus Q equals 1. And so if we wanted to solve for P then, if we know Q, so we know Q squared, we can derive Q. And from that, we can then calculate P because if P plus Q equals 1, then P must equal 1 minus Q. And so if we do that math, 1 minus 0 0.22 is equal to 0 0.978. So this number equals the frequency of the dominant allele. So now, at this point, we have calculated both Q and we have calculated P. And again, let's remind ourselves that we're being asked, what's the predicted frequency of cystic fibrosis carriers? So the term from Hardy-Weinberg was 2pq is what equals the frequency, in this case, big C, little c, of heterozygotes for this allele. So if we look, we need 2, we need p, and we need q. We know the number 2. We've solved for q here. 
and we've solved for p here, so I think we can now solve for the frequency of carriers of cystic fibrosis given the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals for this allele. So if you do the math then, 2 times 0 0.978 times 0 0.022 equals 0 0.043, or if you were to turn that into a fraction, it would be 1 in every 23. What does this mean? This means that 1 in every 23 individuals from this population are heterozygous for the cystic fibrosis allele, or what we would call carriers, which is pretty common. One in 23 people carrying this allele that they can pass down, that which causes cystic fibrosis, is relatively common. So now, the question's not being asked, but you could just as easily now predict what's the frequency of individuals who are homozygous dominant, who do not carry the cystic fibrosis allele and are homozygous for the dominant allele. This we know from Hardy-Weinberg is p squared, and so we've solved p right here, so you could do that math, 0 0.978 times 0 0.978, which is 0 0.95 and so now we've got the frequency of individuals that are heterozygous and the frequency of individuals that are homozygous dominant. So from just knowing the frequency of one possible genotype, we've calculated the allele frequencies of both possible alleles, and we've created, calculated the frequency of the other two possible genotypes. And again, this is all just by applying and manipulating the Hardy-Weinberg equation of p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. And so if you were given the genotype of the heterozygous individuals or the genotype of the homozygous do dominant individuals, you could just as well work backwards to calculate the allele frequencies and then use those allele frequencies to calculate the genotype frequencies of the other two possible genotypes. So I hope this was helpful um, in demonstrating uh, one example of how you could apply uh, very simply the Hardy-Weinberg equation to calculate allele and genotype frequencies uh, for a given population.